Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. I have on the line from uh, in Missouri, Eric Greitens, former governor of Missouri. I have followed this man's career. He is an exceptional human being. And I was uh, hoping and still hope that he will go very far in American political life. He was Republican governor of Missouri and then brought down by corrupt prosecutors who are now being investigated themselves. But to get the full story, we have asked Governor Greitens to come on the show. Eric Greitens, it's a pleasure to have you on the Dennis Prager Show. Dennis, great to be on. Thanks so much for for having me on today. Why don't you uh, bring the country up to date? Because uh, obviously people don't follow every issue in every state. People in Missouri know know what happened, but not everybody outside of Missouri. So in a nutshell, what happened to you? Well, Dennis, in in a nutshell, um, I came into politics as a conservative, as an outsider. Um, I had spent my life as a Navy SEAL. I deployed overseas to places like Iraq, Afghanistan, Southeast Asia, the Horn of Africa, I came home after my team was hit by a suicide truck bomb. I started an organization for veterans called The Mission Continues. I was an outsider to politics. And in 2016, I decided that I was going to run for governor. And I ran, and when we announced that we were running, Dennis, there was nobody in Missouri who gave us, who gave us a chance. Um, but we ran a grassroots campaign with people all over the state who stood up and joined us to take on the political establishment. And we won. We won. It was a tremendous victory in in 2016. And then I think what really shocked the political establishment was that when we came into office, I did exactly what we said we were going to do. We slammed shut the revolving door between the executive branch and lobbyists. We banned all gifts from lobbyists. We killed a politician's pay raise. There was this corrupt tax credit program in Missouri, which had given away $1.3 billion over the last decade. We brought it down to zero. And in short order, what happened was we came in and we we stood up for the things that we campaigned on. You know, Missouri, a lot of your national listeners will remember, was also home to the Ferguson riots. And when when I ran, one of the things that I said is that if something like this happens again, we're going to shut it down. We're not going to allow looting. We're not going to allow burning. You know, when I was governor, we had another very similar incident like this. It was the Jason Stockley trial where a white police officer was, uh, was tried for having killed an African-American man in St. Louis. And we had Antifa come in, and we had all of these activists come in, and they said, we're going to burn uh, St. Louis, and we're going to burn Missouri uh, to the ground. And I came out, and I actually I, I stood with the fiancé, of the man who'd been killed, and I said, look, we're going to protect everyone's constitutional rights. Everyone has a constitutional right to freedom of speech. Everyone has a constitutional right to assembly, to protest, and you're going to see the police coming out to protect those rights. But I was also very clear that, uh, you know, throwing a brick at a police officer is not free speech. Um, Burning a car is not free speech. Throwing bricks through windows is not free speech. And I said... Anybody who engages in burning and looting, what you're going to find is that the only safe space you're going to find is in a jail cell. And this really upset uh, the whole Soros contingent, and it greatly upset a Soros-funded prosecutor in the city of St. Louis named Kim Gardner. Um, This is a woman who Soros funded in 2016. He funded over 70% of her campaign. And uh, so by the time we'd finished our first year in office, we'd upset the political establishment. We'd upset Kim Gardner, the Soros-funded prosecutor. And in 2018, she brought false charges against me. She charged me with crimes. Um, she, she, you know, she literally like made me go down and have my mug shot taken. Everybody knew at the time she did this, and she admitted herself that she charged me for crimes with no evidence. Um, Now, her lead investigator has already been charged with seven felonies, six counts of felony perjury, one felony count of evidence tampering. Um, So they are being prosecuted now. And I'm very grateful that just 
gosh, it was just last Thursday, there was a report that came out from the Missouri Ethics Commission that investigated my campaign, investigated me. It was this extensive investigation, 20 months. I think they said it was over 23 subpoenas, 8,500 documents, over 20 investigator interviews. And at the end of that entire investigation, they said that they found no evidence of any wrongdoing. All right, hold it there if you would, Governor, Governor, or former Governor of Missouri, Eric Greitens. The story gets worse and worse and worse. Hi, everybody. The elected governor of Missouri in 2016 and then resigned from office and now exonerated. And that's the story in a nutshell of Eric Greitens, whom I have on the line, Navy SEAL, former governor. He's really one of the lights in American political life, and the left hated him. But it's not just the left. Your fellow Republicans were not exactly heroes, were they? No, they weren't, Dennis. I mean, in fact, you know, when we did this, when we took on the establishment, when we killed politicians' pay raises, when we slammed shut the revolving door between lobbyists and the executive branch, when we banned all gifts from lobbyists, and most importantly, when we killed these corrupt programs— um, where you'd had literally hundreds of millions of dollars going into the hands of insiders and lobbyists, we had a lot of people who turned on us who were in the Republican Party. And specifically, what happened? What did they do? Well, and what happened was, so you had this Soros-funded prosecutor who made these false charges, and then you had in the Missouri House, you had Democrats and Republicans who set up this investigative committee. Now, this will sound familiar to everybody who watched Adam Schiff um, at work, but at the time what they did was they held secret hearings where we weren't, I wasn't allowed to have a lawyer present. They brought people in. They brought people in who lied, um, and there was no cross-examination of those witnesses, and then they dropped false stories into the press. Um, And, by the way, while they're doing all of this, right, while they're attacking us, with you know Soros-funded prosecutors and, and Democrats and Republicans and insiders in the House, they're doing all of this with taxpayer money. And meanwhile, I and my family have to pay for every penny to defend ourselves out of pocket. And I think we've seen this as part of the left's playbook, is that they weaponize the judicial system and threaten and try to drive your family into bankruptcy with all of these false charges, false accusations. I want to return, though, to the Republican issue. So yes, yes. Uh, th- this is, I, I remember reading about this and thinking, I, I can't believe it. The Republicans are joining in, in, in censuring you. And uh, so is the corruption simply bipartisan? Well, there's certainly bipartisan corruption uh, in Missouri, and we saw that around this corrupt tax credit issue, and we saw it in a lot of in a lot of places. I mean, keep in mind, it was a Republican lawyer politician who came out and who said that he had documents proving that I was guilty of fraud. He said that he had documents showing that my campaign was a criminal enterprise. He came out and said that my my book Resilience which is a book of letters I'd written to a fellow Navy SEAL who had post-traumatic stress disorder. He said that that book was a literary fraud. He made all of these accusations. And then, just last week, the Missouri Ethics Commission, after this exhaustive 20-month investigation, says that they found no evidence of any wrongdoing by Eric Graydon's. So, yes, this was a Republican lawyer politician who was making... What is his, what is his position? Well, he was he was a state rep. Um, he was a state representative. I'm just curious can can he be sued? Well, it's such a good it's such a good point. In fact, one of the things that the Missouri Ethics Commission put in their order, where they said that they found no evidence of any wrongdoing, they also, in an unusual move, put a paragraph in that very specifically said that Eric Graytons and my heirs and successors and anybody on my campaign, and all affected parties maintained all of our civil and criminal remedies in order to um, 
uh, in order to deal with people who made false accusations. So that's absolutely possible. Why uh, is the Missouri Ethics Commission honest? Well, you know, I think that I think that what happened was that finally we had some people who looked at the facts. Um, you know, the problem with everything that the Soros prosecutor did and everything that the insiders did, and they literally just made up false accusations, did so with no evidence, but then they go to their allies in the press who were happy to trumpet these things right, right. You know, across the state, yes. across the oh. country. Conservatives run against Democrats and the press. It's a, it's a very yeah. serious problem. Yeah. This Kim Gardner, the Soros-funded prosecutor, by the way, Soros has funded a tremendous number of districts attorney around the country, our district attorneys, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's a, another very serious problem in Philadelphia, I believe, and, and elsewhere. So uh, back there, is, is she being prosecuted? Yes, there is currently a special prosecutor who, and there is an active criminal investigation into her conduct for what she did in, in my case, and already her lead investigator, who is a former FBI agent, who she brought in, who reported just to her, you know, she didn't go to the police, she didn't use her own office's investigators, she brought in this former FBI agent to work for her on the case to attack me, and he has already been indicted for seven felonies. Uh, six felony counts of perjury for lying under oath, and one felony for tampering with evidence. So he has been indicted, has she? She has not been indicted yet, and in fact, she's been avoiding being deposed. She avoided a deposition for for up to seven, for already, I think it was over seven months. But uh, Tisby's trial is in March. And it sounds like they're going to force her to actually sit down and either answer questions or plead the fifth. Can she be disbarred? Absolutely. And we know that there is, in Missouri it's called the Office of the Chief Disciplinary Counsel. This is the organization that investigates lawyers. They are investigating her, we know. Um, and they would be the, the office who would be responsible for taking away her law license, and she certainly should have her law license taken away. All right, when we come back, final segment with former governor of Missouri and a star, I mean really a star. This, this man, this man should, is presidential material. What's his fu- what does his future hold? I'm Dennis Prager. The Dennis Prager Show. All right, everybody, final segment here with a man I have great admiration for, former governor of Missouri, Eric Reitens. Been completely exonerated because of of the charges that led to his resigning as governor. He was elected in 2016. So I have a few final questions here. One is, has uh, the media, have the media in... uh, in Missouri, reported fairly your exoneration? Oops. I didn't put you on. Um, there okay. Are some, okay. Yeah. Uh, there are some organizations that have been us, but for, for the most part, um, we'll see that they haven't. Now, what's striking is that the national media, who are just coming and looking at the facts, actually have reported it accurately. In fact, all the way from, if you look from CNN to Breitbart, the headlines were found no evidence of any wrongdoing. But what happened was that, in my, in my opinion, was that a lot of the media in Missouri were so embedded with Kim Gardner. Yeah, that's Gordon. why I'm asking the question. Yeah. Yes, so, yeah. yes, go on. That they, they, were, they were so embedded with her that now that the truth is coming out, they won't even report the truth. Now, that, that we do have some, I want to be clear, there, there are some folks who have come out and have said it, but for the most part, what you see is that they have not really trumpeted, especially after the months of them, like, repeating these false allegations, they haven't come out and said. Well, hey, Eric, you, you're, you're living something I wrote 30 years ago. Being on the left means never having to say you're sorry. Is the Post Dispatch? Uh, what is that? What, what are they saying? Do they editorialize anything, or it's like a non-event? 
No, it's, they, they, they certainly haven't said that we were wrong. They heard, certainly haven't said that there was no evidence of any wrongdoing. Um, and after trumpeting all of these false accusations, you think that they would have the humility to just come out and say, you know what, we were wrong. But they haven't done that. And, yeah, you're right. And as your listeners know, like this is part of the left's playbook. They will drive these false All right, we have just one minute. So tell me, is, uh, what's, what's in the future for Eric Reitens? Well, uh, in the immediate future, what I want to do is I want to get the truth out. Um, I am really, really glad that the truth is finally coming out. And I want to make sure that the people of Missouri, I want to make sure that everybody who supported us knows the truth. Do you have a website people can go to? Uh, I encourage everybody to go out to see uh, our Facebook page, Dennis. Um, If you go out to Eric Greitens, G-R-E-I-T-E-N-S, they'll see some of the articles some of the other information we're going to be posting about this story. All right. Well, I I hope to talk to you when uh, you resume being governor of the state of Missouri. I'm Dennis Prager. We continue. The Dennis Prager Show, live from the Relief Factor pain-free studio.